Previously, I showed you how to build a queue using a linked list style inside of Java. But I also said that queues are not language specific and you don't have to use a linked list style. You could also use an array. So I want to quickly show you how to create a queue in Python using a Python's list, which is very similar to an array. Now, you might notice that there's some advantages to Python because of the fact that a list in Python is a dynamically sized data element. But that's a discussion for a different day and is more about different types of languages. You can see this in other languages that have dynamic arrays as well, such as JavaScript, PHP, etc. So here I've got a class queue and I've got my init or constructor. And I'm going to have self value is going to be equal to an empty list. That's just where I'm going to start. Now I'm going to create those three methods that I would create anyways if I had it inside of another language. So here I'm going to specify def in queue. In Python, we always, if we're using a class definition, we have to specify self. So here's our self as our first parameter. And then we're going to do value. Once again, we're going to focus this on being an int. Now, the int is just type hinting uh, because that's the way Python likes to do things. And we're not returning a value just as with before. So in this case, I need to add an element to my value. So I'm going to say self dot. So I specify self dot underscore underscore value. And I'm going to say dot append. That's because it's a list. Now, what am I appending? I'm appending value. And that's all I need to do. It's going to add it to the end. If it's empty, that's okay. It's still a list. It gets to be the first index. If it's not, that's okay too and it's just going to add it to the end of my list so that's all i need to do for the nq for my dq i'm going to specify def dq have my self parameter that's all i'm going to need and i'm going to return a value now what value am i going to return well that's going to be that very first element. But once again, I'm going to need to hold on to that because I'm going to need to remove an element first. I'm going to specify return value equal to zero. And I'm going to check to see if the length of my element is greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then I know I have an element that I can get. Now that I've checked to make sure I have some values inside of my value list, what I'll use is a special list method called pop. And so I'm going to say return value is going to equal self dot underscore underscore value dot pop. And I'm going to list it as zero is I'm removing the very first element. This moves everything down one automatically for me because the first element is now gone. And so my index one becomes index zero, index two becomes index one, etc. Pop is a special command that's built into the list that lets us do this and it returns the value for us. So it's got a couple of nice advantages for us. Once this is done, I'm done with my if statement, so I'm going to back out, and then I'm going to say return the return value, as you can see there. So I still have a third method, so I'm going to create that real quick. And this is almost going to be exactly the same as DQ. The biggest difference is I don't want to pop. So I'm going to just copy and paste this real quick. But instead of saying pop at zero, I'm going to get the index 
value at zero. So this is a really easy way of just kind of almost doing the same thing. Okay, so very simple, very easy. You might say, well, wow, that's a lot easier than the previous video where we looked how to do it with a linked list in Java. Well, yes and no. We're using the advantages of our programming language and the fact that we have dynamically sized arrays. If we did not have a dynamically sized array in the list data type that Python provides, there would be other challenges that we'd have to get used to and work with. So it's all a matter of understanding what language we're using and what we need to do with that in order to create the best system for our needs. We don't always get to pick our languages. We may be put into a project where the languages have been defined, in which case we have to know lots of different methodologies so we're always successful. Now let's just test this real quick. So we're going to create a new queue and we're going to say queue.inqueue and we're going to give it a value. In fact, we're just going to do this a few times. We're going to print the DQ. Since we know we're just calling this main, it's just a little test thing. We'll just do it like this. And you can see here I've added 5, 7, and 99. And you see in the exact same order, they are removed. So nearly identical in functionality. Once again, I chose to use integers just to keep it simple. We could have had another class or a string or anything else that we needed. This is just a simple, simple method that lets us go through this process.